Hello! So today I thought we'd do something fun. I really want you to meet the two girls that I'm here at the Mira Foundation training with. They're both so lovely. One is named Cinnabar, she's 22, and she is so smart, such a ray of sunshine, so sweet and kind and loving, and you can meet her dog. And uh, then Ella Shea, who is like a firecracker. Ella Shea very much reminds me of myself when I was her age, outspoken, passionate, and they're both such great girls. And I want you to meet them. So I sat down with each of them for a little interview. They are both killer bees, which is so fun. And it's been awesome getting to know them. So yeah, I interviewed both of them. And then there's just some like fun little vlog clips of us. So, Without further ado, here it is. Okay, so I want you guys to meet my new friend, Cinnabar. Hello. So glad I've gotten to meet you and spend these three and weeks And so is I. <laughs> um, so Cinnabar was actually born without any eyeballs. And where were you born? I was born in Afghanistan. And you came to Canada at 13? Yes. And you're only 22 now, so you haven't even been here for 10 years, and you know four languages, <laughs> which is wild. So she's been our French translator. What are the languages that you know? So I know Hindi, Persian, um, French, and English. I know English and um, French dog commands. That's as far as I've gotten. I also think it's incredible that you up to 13 years old until you came here weren't really given access to things like orientation and mobility um especially ed education I, I was not educated zero education when i came here she came here nine years ago with zero access to education and zero access to the ability to learning how to be an independent blind person through skills like orientation mobility braille and she knows four languages, lives alone, is in college, and is here getting her second Mira guide dog. Like, I just think that is so unbelievably incredible. And um, just the other day, I had somebody reach out to me in my DMs on Instagram saying how her daughter was born with no eyes. And, you know, she was really, really nervous for her daughter's future. And I told her all about you and just how incredible you are. Um, and I really, I just, I find you so inspiring. And one thing that really touched me is how similar our stories are with our first guide dogs. Exactly. You yes. received your first guide dog here at 15, just two years after picking up a cane for the first time ever, yes. which Mira has very high standards for orientation and mobility. So the fact that within just two years of having access to a cane for the first time, you were able to gain the skills to get your first dog is something to be very proud of because that is not easy with zero light perception zero shadow perception like nothing to help you visually orient yourself yes. only your hearing and your cane is amazing um and can you talk about your experience getting your first guide dog well so like as you mentioned i got my guide dog when i was 15. i was still in high school because as you uh, mentioned that um, i started my education very late in my life um, so when I came here I was nervous from my evaluation but they still uh, passed me and they're like you are made for a dog so you need a dog <laughs> <laughs> you need a dog in your life because like and I want to say like it helped me with my stress as well like I'm a I come from a country which is like uh, there's always war you know, so it helped me a lot with my stress a lot to have a, a companion with me. Yeah. So yeah, I got my guide at 15 from Mira, um, had my evaluation and after one year I I came to the class, I was here for four weeks and I got my first guide dog named Mirex, for, he was a St. Pierre, black and white. So that's the long haired black and white beauties, they're so stunning. <laughs> Oh, they're so they're soft so, and yes. fluffy and cute. And what was his litter theme? So he was theme after, or his theme was after ocean. The ocean. So, ocean. Uh, Mirax me meant um, a shell, a spiky shell. <laughs> but, <laughs> spiky shell. Yeah, he wasn't a spiky but, shell. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. He was not spiky, he was soft, fluffy, you know? 
And I have to mention, sorry, um, that I was afraid of dogs. Very. I had a dog phobia because I never touched a dog because in my country, dogs are always outside. Mm. No pets. I had dogs, but for, as, a guy, uh, as a guard dog. So they were watching dogs, which were chained, out, uh, chained outside of our houses. So I had a dog phobia, but my O&M really wanted me to have a, a guy dog because he knew that it will help me. It's more t like, like I know you always mention in your videos, like a cane is like less effort, but how, how do you say it? A, a cane is like, a guy dog is more work, but a cane is more, more effort. effort. Exactly. Like it's so exhausting yes. when you really don't have much usable vision to help you navigate and you're solely using your ears and a cane. It's like, you don't get to relax. Okay. You can't relax when you're using your cane because you've just got to be so focused. And it really takes a lot of your energy. Okay. That All that effort of focus takes so much energy versus with a guide dog, you kind of have this sense of freedom. It's smooth. Like, it's smooth. You can, you can just kind of turn off your brain a little bit more and just go and it's like a cane is an object finder and a guide dog is an object avoider exactly. they're just not comparable mm -hmm. they're completely yes. different forms of mobility and for some of us like you and i we're just guide dog users that is just who we are and it is it's okay people like using cane like yeah. it's it's okay like some people do like it and and some people hate guide dogs like just they don't like the amount of work that it takes yeah. they don't like having to be so on top of the training all of the time the extra expenses the fur um having a living breathing creature that they have to take care of yeah. instead of a cane that they can just put in the corner like i i think it's great that both exist because they both fulfill different people's needs and wants yeah. um and some people are happy to use either and some people like you and me are just always gonna want to have another dog a friend like it's yeah it's her it's best friend. It's who, more than mobility. Who, who does not judge you? Like, yes. You can tell any secrets. You can share anything. <laughs> They're just gonna be there and listen, you know? Uh, so one thing is coincidence is that me and your ex, we were here for evaluation at the same time. Oh. She showed uh, the dog um, to to my O&M. She's like, this is a dog that I want to give to Sonavar. And uh, I got a plushie. Uh, a, a plushy toy from yeah. my O and M, oh. who looked like my dog. Before I get, before I get him, he gave me a dog that looked like him because he knew which dog yeah, I was getting. He knew. Yeah. Oh, Mira sells um, merchandise. Actually, maybe you know what? I'm gonna buy a bunch of the Mira merch. It ends up being fundraising for Mira. That's why they sell it. I'm gonna do a giveaway on a yes. bunch of Mira merch. So I will link information i've decided right now i'm doing it so i'm going to link information on how to win a bunch of mirror merch including cute stuffed dogs water bottles all sorts of stuff so description box for the giveaway and so you trained for four weeks and he was your dog for six years yes um six years i had him for six years and unfortunately he lost his battle with uh, lymphoma what's been very interesting is you know, visually, obviously he had long hair and Gypsy had short hair, but all the white markings, they looked the same. And obviously Gypsy passed away as my working dog from cancer as well. Um, just the way that your dog did. Still working right up until until the end. And um, and he was not ready to retire. No. Like, he was always searching for his like harness, like, mom, where's my harness? Oh. Where, where's my harness? They love to work these dogs and it's so special and magical. And um, unfortunately he lost his battle just two and a half months before you came to train with your new guide dog. Yes. And that's literally the exact same timing as I had with Gypsy, just two and a half months, which as you're, you're experiencing and I've experienced um, being able to get a new dog so quickly and there's good and bad to that. The good thing is that we don't have to go long without our preferred mobility aid that not only helps us get point A to B but makes us feel safe and confident and independent and loved and you know having that friendship and that connection and that love in our lives but also it can be emotionally challenging to try to train and bond with a new dog when your heart still belongs to your last dog the previous one yeah uh, well as you mentioned like i love the mira's matching process like they don't have a pre-match for us which is 
I, I love I love that pro I, I love that um, how do you say experience. That? experience yeah I love that experience that Mira will have you in their class and they don't have any well they have kind of have idea but they will they will let you the oppor uh, opportunity to try different dogs which work with different dogs and spend the night with them if you want to as well and so this time around how many dogs did you work with I worked with um, four. Four dogs. Yes. What were their names? So they were Chanel, uh, Joker, uh, Vac, Eggroll. Eggroll. <laughs> I love the name Eggroll. Ellis Shane instead of our like, no, that's such a bad name. And I'm like, iconic. Eggroll, he is iconic. <laughs> and she, lo she loves food. Uh, I love food names. Names, so you love the theme. My absolute favorite are all the food themes. I just love it. I think it's so fun. <laughs> and so first you ended up taking Joker back to the dorms for a few yes. nights. Yes. And Joker was a short haired, all black Lebanese, or did he have a little white? Yes, he did. He did have more white than Beck. You spent a few days here with Joker, which was obviously Joker was named after the Batman movies. Um, that was the theme was like superheroes and supervillains for that litter. And Joker spent some time here. I got to meet Joker. And um, then you ended up switching to the dog you are graduating with, which is actually the sibling to Ben Ben. Yes. Her name is Beck which is obviously a beer, and she is from the litter one year after Ben. So they share the same mother, but a different father, which I think is really great. And she feels like Ben Ben. She feels like Benny. She acts like Benny. We all know Ben Ben was, he had my heart. So I, I am excited for you, and I know that Bonding is really hard. Yes. The transition of first dog to second dog is famously the most difficult one there is it's in the guide dog world. I can tell you. Oh, yeah. I know that she's like Ben and how much I loved Ben. I know you're going to grow to just love this dog. And she's a great worker, which is ultimately the most important thing. Yes. Is there anything you want to say about Beck or your experience training this time around? I really love my experience. I just, like you said, um, I'm having a bit of difficulty with bonding. Because as hard as it is, we always compare our first dog to, like, we want the second dog to be like our first dog, act like, act like the, the first dog, which is not going to happen. Every dog has their own personality, yep. their own working um, style. And style, and their speed and everything is different. It's like a person. Not all persons are the same. So... I'm trying, I'm, I'm loving this dog already. I'm just like brushing her, sitting on the floor with her, hugging her, petting her, getting, getting her some snuggles. So that helps a lot with bonding. It's coming along. Yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. Yeah. And I'm excited to know in six months, you know, <laughs> where you're at, because I know you're going to have done like such a, a 180 of, of feeling like, you don't know if it's right to feeling like this is my girl. And I hope that you have a long career with her ahead. Yeah. And the trainers told me to, the, the trainer who's, uh, who's the, the instructor who's leading this class, who's training with us, well, who's training us. Yeah. <laughs> the dog trainer told me that, trust me. So I trust him a lot. I respect him. And uh, he knows the best for us. Yeah. I think what I love is like having the autonomy, like being able to feel like in part we've been allowed to pick our partner because these dogs guide us for six to eight years, sometimes more, sometimes less, and we're with them literally 24-7 and we have to trust them with our lives. And exactly. the the bond, the love is is so important in that partnership. and. I love that we get to take dogs back to the dorms to see if it feels right and then send them back and pick a new one if it doesn't and have conversations with the trainers and say, what do you think? I, 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 I was really in love with, uh, with Joker, but um, the trainers uh, um, sat with me and uh, he's like, I could let you have Joker if you want. But he told me all the cons as well, like all the disadvantages of that going, dog over Yeah, back. because yeah. I, I really... Uh, I, I really love that dog, but he had lots of disadvantages for my lifestyle because I'm going, I'm going to university and um, 
I have a, a city, you know, in the, mm-hmm. the downtown. So every every dog is better I, for different people, exactly. Right? Yeah, and I I do I do I go to schools to do speeches. So I I don't. He's like, you don't need a dog that is hyper. So <laughs> so <laughs> that Joker yeah. needs a high energy. Exactly. Lifestyle. Yeah, he yeah. does. I couldn't imagine having it any other way. Like being able to experience different dogs and being able to not only understand their speed and their working style but their personality a yeah. little bit yeah it's a really special experience and thank you for sharing your experience with all of us well thank you for sharing your story thank with you all so of much us. for having me by the way for those who also can't see like us Sinovar and i accidentally both showed up in blue and white for this sit down conversation my mom like right before we started filming was like you're both wearing blue and white so um we're already on the same wavelength yeah Okay, so this is Ella Shea. She is here from the United States of America. She came through Mira USA. She is 16 years old, but actually got approved for your first guide dog at 14, but then COVID ruined everything. 13, actually. Oh, 13, just like me. (laughs) Um, So do you want to share some of your experience? I don't know if you want to talk about your vision, your vision loss, what you see. We have a very similar story to one another. <laughs> yes. Which makes sense as to why you watch my content. <laughs> yeah. I have little to no vision. I can see light. I can't tell where it's coming from and I can't tell how intense it is. I can just tell a light exists in a room. So I know there's light here. Um, I know there's windows, so I know there's light. Um, I come from Atlanta in the States, um, through the Mira USA process. So you apply straight to Mira USA and they have their own criteria to get into there. It's very intense. And then after you pass all of their evaluations, then, and only then, will they then send you, send your information to Mira Canada. And then they approve you through their process. So it's like getting approved to two schools. And then Mira, Canada does its own evaluation, and then you come up here to Mira Canada to get your dog. So it's a long process, is <laughs> what I just learned. I don't know much about Mira USA other than that they give guide dogs to children ages 11 to 16. Mm-hmm. Um, although, I think, is 16 the cutoff? So, yes, normally I they wouldn't give it to me at this time, but since I got approved at 13, they would give it to me. They upheld the approval yes so i applied actually in september when i was 13 and i got approved in march when i was then 14. so it's a very long and that was through mira usa then they sent me to canada and we're like do you want her do we like her and they did and they did (laughs) and then you came up in late april of this year Mm -hmm. when you were 16 and that is when i got a call from nico who is the head of the school and he was like, okay, so there's this girl here, and she came knowing all the commands. She came knowing all about the campus and the dogs and the staff and everything because she watches all of your videos, and I've never seen somebody so prepared to come <laughs> for their evaluation. Um, would you mind calling her and surprising her? And I was like, oh my god, yes, of course. And I was like, but wait, tell me, like, is she going to pass? Because I don't want to be like, are you excited to get your guide dog from Mira? If, if she was not going to pass. I did well. She did. She, he was like, she's incredible. She's fantastic. She's just what we look for. I was so excited. And I called her and we had this adorable little phone call. She was freaking out. It was very cute. And um, obviously, I did not know at the time that I would be here. Nobody knew at that time. No one. No one that mentioned. I would be here. Uh, cause it was not in the cards, but here I am. I want to hear about your process coming for your evaluation. I think it's changed a lot since I had mine yes. 15 plus years ago. Um, so what was your experience like with your evaluation? So my evaluation felt like everything I did was being <laughs> monitored and it was. Mm-hmm. So when I first came here, it was really awkward cause Karen, one of the trainers was telling me all about everything that's happened here. And I was bored because I was like, Molly already told me about this. I already know. Thank you. But I had to pretend like I never knew. I was like, oh, that's so fast. Oh my goodness. That's so, in- <gasps> never. Oh my goodness. That's so unique. And then, um, the next morning I got up early and walked all the way to the park, by the way, you're not allowed to do that. No one let me know that, but I just, you know, walked off. They went looking for me, and then I came back once they were like, they were like, um, we found her. 
like a mile away. So we had breakfast and then we went into um, a city near here that we've been working a lot with the dogs and we did um, street crossings, walking, working with the dogs and then that afternoon we went and worked with the dogs in the kennel and and you tried like 15 or 18 dogs didn't you? I tried like I would say at least 10 dogs and not all of them even passed like my favorite dog didn't pass final evaluation there's so many evaluations the dogs have to go through mm -hmm. like just getting slotted into what program they're training for is not the end of the uh the testing they can fail at any point from getting placed into a training program to like right up until when they would be ready to go out to a client so you tried a bunch of different dogs yes. including some that i tried yes like perlane yes and ended up when you came back for class how many dogs did you try i only worked with three um so they had set aside three dogs that they thought could possibly work with me and which given you had just been evaluated with 10 different dogs like two months prior yeah makes sense because they would have already weeded out most of the dogs that weren't going to be right mm -hmm. for you know my lifestyle where i live and my speed there was they could narrow it down pretty well to which dogs would work and very similar to experiences that i've had you ended up bringing a different dog back than the dog you ended up with yes so the first dog i worked with actually was not she was my favorite i absolutely adored her but she um was not going to work for my pace or for kind of the super loud environments i'm used to they worked me with another dog that was not my favorite and um, now he is, <laughs> and now he's mine, and very, very cute. So you took about, what, five days with Beck, mm -hmm. who is now Cinnabar's dog? <laughs> yeah, for about five days, off and on. She didn't come to my room ever, um, because the first week you don't actually take the dog back in your room, but Friday, um, Friday they sat down with me, and they were like, so obviously one, one of the dogs we worked with is not going to work, and then, they said both dogs would work with you, Beck and Pico, which is my dog. They said, so we're going to let you make the decision. I worked with him and it was very hard because I liked her, like emotionally mm -hmm, more, mm -hmm. but he was a better worker for, for me. your lifestyle. Yeah, for me yes. personally. So I chose him and now, now he's my baby. <laughs> His name is Pico, which is absolutely adorable. I really <laughs> love that name. I actually love all three of our dog's names. Yes. Jack, Pico, and Elton John are all, like, great names. Yes. And Pico's theme was cheese, which Gallup would have died. Like, yes. Gallup <laughs> wishes he was named after cheese, um, although I think we would have had even more issues. Yes. He was already such a cheese head that if he was named after cheese, every time he heard his own name, he'd be like, Mine? Where? 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 I get to eat it? And I'd be like, no, that's you. And he'd be like, I eat me? And I'd be like, oh, that's fantastic. Num, 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 cheese. So I also call him Pico de Gallo because I eat a lot of Mexican food. I think both. Both are cute. Both and work. Pico in French means little freckles and or little dots. Freckles. And he has freckles on his snout. He actually, ironically, also looks like my first guy, dog, Gypsy. So all three of us, Yumi and Cinnabar, all of our first dogs looked alike, mm -hmm. but he is short-haired like Gypsy, so he even looks more like Gypsy than Cinnabar's first dog. And he acts a lot like her. Yes, they are. he's a prince and she was a princess. They're both very fast walkers mm -hmm. and uh, very snobby. And a little gassy. Yes, very <laughs> gassy. More than a little gassy. Very <laughs> gassy, Pico. And Pico is so obsessed with Elton John, it's absolutely adorable. It's so cute. He <laughs> loves... Elton. He's like, but mommy is first of voluminous. He's so fluffy. Look at his tail. And then he'll like walk in front of him and like start strutting, like showing off. He's like, like do you look see at me, me, Elton John? Do you see me? I'm so good. I'm yeah. so good. It's very cute. They have a love affair going on. So mm -hmm. they are in fact boyfriends. Yes. I don't know how Elton John feels about it. I think he's into it. But Pico's definitely the pursuer yeah. of the relationship. So overall, how have you found your like first experience coming to Mira? Everyone here is great. Everyone is so supportive and so amazing, but I don't think anyone could have prepared me for how emotionally, physically, mentally draining pro this process is. It and is. I have told everyone, <laughs> I have warned everybody in my videos, and you still weren't prepared. No, you told me, but I don't think anyone could have prepared me. It was, I cry 
all the time. It is, I sleep all the time, I eat, and it's just so overwhelming because I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, it's like a, you're, you're signing on to an eight year commitment with a dog, also a mobility aid you've never used, and one that makes their own decisions sometimes and mess up royally and you have to correct them and it's just, there's so much in it and you're like, I wanna do the best for them, but also he's annoying the hell out of me and <laughs> I wanna cuddle, but also I'm covered in dog hair. Like, it's a lot and it sounds cute and funny, but it's just, there's so much emotionally you go through. Like, everything is so much. And everything for your first one, like, everything is new, yes. right? Like, for me, being here training for the fourth time, everything is pretty much second nature to me. Um, and I find that I'm able to, like, learn new things, new techniques that I've never learned before because maybe they're new at Mira or they're just trying it out for the first time or it's a different trainer, so it's a slightly different style. And I'm able to take on those new things pretty quickly and easily because all the other stuff is so second nature to me, having been done doing it for 15 years now. But when it's your first time, like everything is new, everything is fresh. I can't imagine getting my first dog and doing it in under four weeks. Like, it, yeah. I feel like you need, as exhausting as it is, and by the end you're like, let me go home. Like, you need those four weeks, in my opinion. Like, because yeah. I can't imagine doing it in like two weeks, trying to learn all of that while also trying to bond. Like, it's it's so much. It It is. It is just so much. And I think four weeks has felt, especially going into the fourth week, has felt like the longest time, but also doesn't feel like enough time. Yeah. And like, I'm like, oh my God, let me go home. But at the same time, I'm like, don't, don't, I ready? don't let me leave. <laughs> Lock the doors. But you'll be having your follow-up just yes. a couple days later. A trainer at here at Mira always goes out to do a follow-up. Mm -hmm. So once we get back home, two to three days later, they send out um, a trainer to kind of help acclimatize you mm -hmm. to your new environment and help you acclimate with the dog in your school where you'll be taking Pico or around your neighborhood, common places you go, like the local mall that you go with your friends on the weekends, just things like that. Yeah. Um, so that'll be a huge help. Mm -hmm. And sleep a lot. Yes. Rest up. <laughs> I got up at 11.30 today. <laughs> Sunday, it's our day off. It's the best day of the week. Yes. But we've been having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's been a great time. And I'm so glad that my class has not only been like so small, mm -hmm. but with two English speakers who are also girly girls and we all have so much in common. And it's it's been a really fun experience for me, especially because it's been a very emotional one for me. It's been nice to have like two new friends that I can hang out with. They make me feel old every day, <laughs> but that's okay. Actually, Ella Shea was born the same day as my first guide dog, Gypsy. Same year, same day. So. That makes me feel old. Because uh, I got her when she was two and a half and I was 13. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're 12 years older than me. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. She's keeping me young. <laughs> Um, is there anything else you want to share about your experience going to Mira USA or getting a guide dog at 16 or having your first Mira experience um, that you'd like people to know or you feel like we've shared it all? I think Mira works really well to um, treat everyone so special and like genuinely loves everyone here. It's an amazing thing that like the... The trainers here really do care about you. By the way, if you'd like to keep up with Ella Shea and her new guide doggy Pico on their <laughs> journey in high school, where can they find you? You can find me at Instagram on at underscore Ella Shea underscore M and on TikTok at Ella Shea underscore M. I will link them in the description box below. Okay, Cinnabar would like you all to know. Take it away, Cinnabar. I wanted you guys to know that this was the best, one of my best class that I was I have been trained with. I had Molly, who was a kind soul hearted, and I love her, and I'm one of her best, I'm, a, I'm one of her fans, and Elashe, all of you guys were great. And I, oh wait, I have a question, Elashe, I have one more question for you too. 
I'm curious to know the answer. There's no right or wrong answer. Okay. As given you both watch me. Yes. And now you've spent weeks with me. Yes. IRL. Um, am I the same? Am I different? What do you think? You're How has it been spending time with me? You're, I feel like you're a, a very identic person. You are real, like, you behave like how you behave, you know? <laughs> you're a real person. So, honestly, I like you more in person. Oh! So, and as a viewer of six years, I feel like that means a lot. <laughs> so, you're, you cuss more. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's, I'm always honest with you guys that I do yes. swear that's in real life. Say, and it's true. Romantic. I don't know. You're just really cool in real life. The thing is, like, it's so funny. So many things that she gets sponsored by, she actually uses. It's so funny. The first day I was here, it was raining. I was like, oh, I'm going to go grab my Vessies. And she was like, they sponsor you. I was like, yeah, but I wear them in real life. Yeah, and and then sunscreen and different stuff. And she's like, actually... Like the things that sponsor you, you actually use the I'm products and actually so love them. My Crocs right now, and also both Cinnabar and LSA have been converted to Hawaiian Tropic. They are now obsessed with Hawaiian Tropic. And they're like, yeah, where can I buy it? Where can we buy it? We need it. <laughs> oh, oh, um, LSA was like, right away, she's like, I've decided I want to book a princess cruise. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so guys, be sure, whatever she is, is sponsored by, she uses it. She makes sure that it's good. She uses yes. it on herself. I did not tell them to say any of this. I would like to state for the record. Yes, be assured, guys. And it's really funny. She was also speaking about different things that offered to sponsor her, and she was like, "But yeah. I don't use them. Like, yeah. it's not something I actually genuinely like. So I would never, never actually share it with my fans." Well, I'm, followers. I'm glad they think that I'm authentic and honest because I think I am and I think I'm the same person but all the I also think I'm more fun in real life. You so are. thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> You're welcome <laughs> Yay! I'm real and authentic. We love it. Oh my god, this would have really backfired on me if they were like, honestly? Honestly? Uh, a she <laughs> She's not very nice. She's yeah. really cold and she's just spends really all rude. her time in her room alone because she doesn't want to talk to anybody because she, she thinks us. she's so important. She's mm -hmm. so funny but she thinks she's that's why she doesn't get Yeah, she was like, I don't want to talk to the f***ing peasant. <laughs> Bleep that. <laughs> I would never. So those are the girls. Um, Cinevar doesn't really do social media, but I'm gonna link LSJ's social media below. As I said, I'm also doing a giveaway. I haven't picked the stuff up yet, but I'm gonna go to the gift shop. So it'll just be, I'll put like some B-roll here and list down below what the items are. And if you'd like to win some Mira merch that helped fundraise for Mira, info linked down below in the description box. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed meeting the fun girls that I've been training with here at Mira and their dogs. You definitely wouldn't guess by looking at all of our dogs that they're all the same breed, but they are in fact all considered Labernese, combination of a Bernese Mountain Dog and a Lab. So those are three different versions of what a Labernese can end up looking like. And until next time, you can click over here to check out this video or over here to check out this one. Two different journeys, two different moments of training. And I'll see you next time.